Welcome to the Graduate Student Seminar Series on Job Searching and Networking, presented by the Center for Career and Professional Development. We are located on the third floor of Hendricks Student Center on the main campus. We can also be found online at career.clemson.edu and on social media at Clemson CCPD. So, which picture are you? Are you ready but have no idea where to begin, like our retriever picture in the top right corner? Or are you pretty relaxed right now and not worried about beginning your search, like the chocolate lab in the middle? Or maybe you're, a, you're the little dog in the bottom left corner that is super prepared and ready to start. No matter where you are in the process, we can help. During this workshop, you will learn, one, a little bit about the center, two, getting in the searching mindset, three, the steps you should take before you start the search, four, difference in searching by job type, five, the power of informational interviewing, and finally, your next steps. The Center for Career and Professional Development, or CCPD for short, is comprised of three units, the Michelin Career Center, the University Professional Internship and Co-op Program, also known as UPIC, and the Cooperative Education Program. As a graduate student, your interaction with the CCPD will be through the Michelin Career Center, as the other two programs are, there, are either exclusively or primarily for undergraduate students. Through the Michelin Career Center, we offer career counseling, workshops, career fairs, networking events, employer events, and recruiting. All services are available to graduate students as part of your student fees. And after graduation, we also serve alumni for one year. You can see in our mission, state, our mission statement that the word empower is highlighted. Our goal as a center is to teach students the skills they need to be successful for a lifetime, whether that is resume writing, interviewing, networking, um, obtaining professional experience, and more. Statistics show that people will have between 10 and 15 jobs during their career. Our goal is to teach you the skills necessary to be successful in that environment. The role of career service professionals has changed. We are not here to place a student into a job. We are here to empower you in your career and professional development by providing you with the tools and resources necessary to be, to be successful. The saying, if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. If you teach a man a fish, he eats for a lifetime, is our philosophy here in the center. Career development is a process. You can meet with a career counselor several times to have your needs met. Think about what you would like to talk about at each meeting. It doesn't mean you have to plan beforehand. It could be as simple as having a list of questions to ask. If needed, come back for additional visits. We can help you develop your career plan. Also, you can fully utilize our office and services for your first year after graduation. After that time, you would be better served utilizing the Alumni Career Services Office and their resources. Hopefully you have seen our nine uh, core career competencies and the Learn, Act, Flex, Succeed cycle. There's been a lot of talk in the press about the skills gap, meaning employers do not believe college students are learning the necessary skills to be successful in the world of work. We believe it is more of an articulation of skills gap rather than students actually lacking the necessary skills. In an effort to help you understand what skills are important, we developed these nine core competencies. All events and resources from the center will be devoted to helping students understand, acquire, and articulate these nine competencies. Think about the nine competencies as the what we want you to learn, and the learn, act, flex, succeed cycle as the how. You can start by learning something new, trying out what you've learned, flexing if it fails, and looking for a new way until ultimately you reach success. Today's workshop focuses on technology, communication, and self-awareness. Did you know that 80% of job vacancies are not posted online? You might be wondering why a company would not post a position that they need filled. Many companies prefer to hire people that current employees know and have created employee referral programs to incentivize the process. If a current employee refers someone for a job, most likely they have talked with that applicant about the company, its culture, and the position in detail. They also know the applicant's experience and skills and believe it is a good fit for the position. 
This helps to prevent turnover because the applicant knows a great deal about the company and has decided before applying that it's a good fit. Recruiting can be a lengthy and expensive process. By hiring by referral, it becomes a better return on, an, on their investment. So now that you know that there is a hidden job market out there, how do you reach it? You have to use a multifaceted approach to your job search process. It is still important to look online, but you also have to use your network. You can build your network by attending career fairs, employer information sessions, uh, conferences, by utilizing your family, your friends, your faculty, previous coworkers, previous supervisors, Clemson alumni, and even your colleagues in your current graduate program. And we're going to talk more about building your network later in the presentation. People who are successful early in the job search process usually have one thing in common. They were involved during their years of study. Involvement can take many forms. Um, internships, part-time work experience, uh, previous full-time work experience, membership and leadership in organizations, research experience, teaching experience, and things such as that. You should be adding to your undergraduate involvement. Employers are looking for soft skills and technical skills. Soft skills are things like teamwork, organization, communication skills, adaptability, and so on. That should sound familiar. Our core competencies are based on research from employers related to the skills they look for in employees. You should be developing these skills and learning how to articulate them on your resume and in interviews. If you've not updated your resume in a while, now is the time to do it. You should have an updated master document prior to starting your job search. The master document lists all of your experiences in great detail. And then from this document, you will create tailored resumes for each application. Have several people give you feedback on your resume. It will then be up to you to translate that feedback into a cohesive document that accurately reflects your brand. If you need help uh, writing a resume, watch our resume writing workshop or visit our office during drop-ins. If you're unsure about what direction to go in upon graduation, start talking to professionals in the field and visit our office. Talk to your faculty mentors. How did they get to where they are now? Does that interest you? Utilize website, websites like Versatile PhD to read stories from PhD students who went outside of academia. The Career Center uh, provides basic access to Versatile PhD through our website. Go to LinkedIn and read profiles of Clemson alumni from your discipline. What are they doing now? You can also look up occupation titles on ONET or in the Occupational Outlook Handbook. These resources give tremendous insight into occupations. The last step you should take before you begin your job search process is to develop a tracking method. Finding a job is about, is about to become your job, so you need to stay organized. You need to pick a tracking method that works for you. On the slide, you see an example based in spreadsheet software. We have several sheets for each part of the search process. Research, applied, interviewing, sad day, and network. Start with developing the research worksheet. This will track all of the companies and positions that you are currently reviewing but have not yet applied to. Columns could include the company, uh, position title, posted on date, closing date, a contact person for the position, notes about the company, and so on. Once you decide to apply for a position, you're going to create an applied worksheet and copy that row of information from the research worksheet to the new applied worksheet. And you may need to add additional columns at this point, such as applied on date or username and password for the site. If you're offered an interview, congratulations. Um, now you can create an interviewing worksheet and copy that row of information from the applied worksheet to the new interviewing worksheet. You will want to add additional columns such as the type of interview, for example, phone, Skype, or in person, the format of the interview, so is it a group interview, one-on-one, -on -one, do you have to do a presentation, the length of the, of the interview, interview, is it 30 minutes, an hour, a day and a half, um, in the case of a phone or Skype interview, who is making the call, names of the interviewers, timeline of the interview process, and other information related to the interview. 
Unfortunately, we don't get offered an interview or given a job offer for every position we apply to. So you should create another worksheet for the decline letters. We call it sad day in our example. Move all the jobs that you are no longer be cons being considered for to this sheet. That way you know that you do not need to follow up anymore. And then finally, you can use this tracking document to also track your networking contacts. This can include their name, their title, company, um, email, phone number, the date of your last contact with the person, uh, notes on what you discussed. Prior to your search, you also need to do some self-assessments. What are you good at? What do you enjoy doing? What are your interests and values? Can you articulate those things in a resume, a cover letter, and an interview? You should also be identifying your priorities. Are you willing to locate, relocate or are you place bound? Do you want to pursue work in industry or academia? What type of company do you want to work for? Large, midsize, small, startup, or a well-established firm? Can you move up in that organization? If not, are you okay with working there for a short term and then moving on to find a promotion? What are your salary requirements? Do you know how much you need to live by your definition of a comfortable lifestyle? Do your research on our website and other sites such as salary.com or glassdoor.com to find out what a typ typical salary range is for your profession in your desired location. If you can't afford to live on $30,000 a year, then don't apply to positions that, are, that pay that. Look into the company's history, values, reputation, mission statement. Does that fit with your values? Knowing yourself will help you decide whether a company or a position is a good fit prior to you applying. How do you show an employer that you are qualified for a position? Well, through your current and past experiences. Those can include work experience, such as part-time jobs, internships or practicums, cooperative education, formal uh, full-time work experience, research and teaching experience, um, and so on. But don't forget that extracurricular involvement is also important and can help showcase those soft skills. This can be on-campus involvement in organizations, clubs, and committees, or off-campus involvement with organizations, conferences, and things like that. You have to be involved during your graduate school years to be competitive in today's job market. Simply attending class and getting a degree is not enough. If you need a part-time job, you can look both on campus and off. Some part-time positions will be posted in Clemson Job Link, which is our Clemson student online job portal. And I'm gonna go through that resource more here in a few minutes. Additionally, you can visit campus offices that typically hire students, such as the bookstore, um, Clemson Dining Services, the library, Fike Recreation Center, um, Tiger Paw Productions, the Brooks Center, and CCIT. Um, typical off-campus employment opportunities are found in uh, full-service restaurants, fast food restaurants, retail stores, uh, grocery stores. While we encourage employers to post with us, um, not all do, so we encourage you to physically visit these businesses to seek out employment opportunities. And these types of jobs are available year-round, but are typically filled right at the start of the semesters as students return to campus. So as a graduate student, you may be on campus before the undergraduates, and that provides you an advantage as you can seek out those opportunities first. So let's talk about timelines for different types of searches. For internships, we suggest searching at least one semester prior to your start date. Remember, internships are available during the fall, spring, and summer terms. And we see a large number of postings in Clemson Job Link in September to early November for spring and now some summer in internships. And then again in January to early March for the bulk of summer internships and for fall internships. And then in late April and into May, we will see another small increase in postings as organizations realize that they have a last minute need for an intern during the summer generally. For full-time jobs, you wanna complete what we call a soft search one year prior to graduation. A soft search is when you look for job postings in the areas that you're considering working post-graduation, but you don't actually apply to those positions. 
Read through the job descriptions carefully to see if you have the skills and experience necessary to be successful in the application process. If not, you have six months to a year to develop those skills or gain the required experience. Start your real, real search uh, one semester prior or at least by the beginning of the semester in which you graduate. It can take four to six months or even longer to secure a full-time position. And prior to either search, make sure your application documents are up to date and that you have started practicing interviewing. And we can help with both. Um, resume assistance is provided during drop-ins or appointments, and we hold in-person mock interviews as well as provide virtual mock interviews within Clemson Joplin. So this slide shows popular online searching methods, and I'm going to walk you through using Clemson Joblink, NACELINK, CareerShift, Going Global, and the online internship books. There is a plethora of other online resources available as well. Many professional organizations have online job boards and may hold interviewing sessions at their annual conferences. In addition to professional associations, industries may have specific websites for job seekers. So for example, higheredjobs.com is for people wishing to work at colleges and universities. So do a quick Google search for your industry and see what job board, boards may be available. Um, if you have a targeted list of companies where you would like to work, then focus your time on their HR web uh, web pages for current open positions. And then there are many online job boards available such as Glassdoor, LinkedIn, Indeed, Monster, and even newspapers still have classified sections online. So let's take a, take a look at a few of our resources. First is Clemson JobLink. This is our internal job portal for students and alumni. When companies want to recruit Clemson students, they contact us for an account and can post as many positions as they would like. So to log in, go to career.clemson.edu and enter your username and password in the job link login section. If this is your first time in the system or you haven't logged in in a while, please visit the My Account section to update your personal information. It is important that your class standing, your major, and your GPA are correct as employers can restrict applications based on those criteria. So go through each tab um, updating your information. Then when this is complete, go over to the Profile section and create or update your profile. You will see that this looks similar to LinkedIn. You can write a compelling personal statement that describes your background, goals, and passions. It can be up to 500 characters. You can see mine is very short right now. Enter your education, your experience, and projects. And then in the skills section, you can choose from a list of skills or create your own. So if you click edit skills and start typing, it will give you different ideas or suggestions. Once your profile is complete, you can choose to publish it um, and share it with others. In the Documents section, you can upload resumes, cover letters, um, unofficial transcripts from IROR, writing samples, and other documents. We do suggest that you upload PDF versions of each document so that it holds your formatting no, no matter what platform it is viewed on. In the events section, you can see upcoming career fairs and employer information sessions. To learn more about an event, simply click on the title. Then you can learn more about, for example, our career fair and see who's coming. And then here's the information sessions. The interview section lists your on-campus um, interview schedule. So if you don't have any interviews, it will give you this message here. The employer section allows you to search for positions by employer. So let's just take a look at one. 
And you can see a company overview. There may be contact information for the recruiter, um, available positions. These are active postings, job leads. These are positions that they've offered in the past, um, and career fairs if they have registered for a career fair in the past. If you click on a star next to an employer's um, name, it will make it a favorite employer. And then you can be updated on new opportunities or events with that company by it being in your following list. The resources section uh, provides some career exploration links and our mock interview uh, portal is here. You can use either a recommended interview um, or you can create your own. And it's pretty easy to use. Okay, let's dive into the job section now. Clemson Job Link Postings is a database of positions looking specifically for Clemson students. You can see that the total number of postings in the system at any given time, and this will fluctuate during popular recruiting times. If you enter a keyword and then click on Advanced Search to begin. Be careful of adding too many filters. I generally suggest choosing the position type. And you can click more filters. And maybe the geographic location. If you are an international student, you can also search based on work authorization. So this returned 34 results. If too few positions are found, go back and take off some of these filters. And if too many are found, then either add additional filters or choose more targeted keywords. Next to some of the positions, it says not qualified. That means that the employer chose screening criteria that I do not have. Maybe it is major, class standing, or GPA. Um, to learn more about a position, you just click on the position title. If I was interested in applying to this position, I could upload a resume um, and cover letter and apply directly through the system. And some employers will have you apply on their own websites, and those application instruction will be listed here on the right. You can also follow a company um, through this section as well. The system will also recommend jobs to you based on your profile. And then if you've applied for jobs, they will be listed right here as well. OCI stands for on-campus interview, so non-OCI is off-campus interviews, and then OCI is on-campus interviews. There is another job board within Clemson Job Link, and it's called NACE Link. Um, this is a national database of all positions within the NACE network. And NACE stands for the National Association of Colleges and Employers. So if you click on that link, it's the fourth link right here, we'll open a new tab. And generally, this system has about 2 million jobs at any given time. And you can filter by location and keywords. And as you begin typing, it will begin suggesting locations for you. You can enter job titles or keywords. And you can change your search terms based on the number of results found, either make them more specific or more general. And to learn more about a job, you simply click on the job title. And if you're interested in that position, you can just click on the apply now to be taken to the application portal wherever this job was originally posted. So that is NACELINK and Clemson Job Link. 
Let's return to our website here and look at some additional resources. So if you go to the resources tab and click on career shift, this is a web crawler that searches the internet for publicly posted positions that match your search criteria. We pay for this service, so you do need to access it from our website through this link. Click on sign up now to create an account or choose member login if you already have an account. We suggest using your Clemson email address. To start, to start a church search, excuse me, you're going to go to the My Jobs tab. And then just like with the other websites, you're going to enter keywords. You can also search by uh, region. We do suggest you choose state and the metro area or the zip code and the zip radius. Do not choose both. Confuses the system. And you can search by job type. If it returns too many results for you to go through, again, change your search criteria. Um, maybe add some additional keywords or use a specific job title. If you find a position that you like, simply click on the job title to learn more about the position and to see the uh, application instructions. And it does open it in a new tab. If you want to save this job, you can click on Save Job, place it in an existing folder, or you can create a new folder. And then you'll see that the link is saved over here. We do suggest that you go ahead and print this position description or save it as a PDF to your computer because once they take this position off the website, that link will no longer work. You can also choose to search uh, by contacts at the company. And if you want to choose enter by Clemson. So there's no one at, from Clemson University at BG Medical according to their staff profiles. Um, these results are based on what is publicly posted, so if there is no staff profile, um, then the search is not going to find one, find anyone. If it did find, let's take off the company name. And if you do find contacts at particular companies that are from Clemson University, um, you can try to make a connection with them as a current student, um, but just respect their response and follow up accordingly. Then if you would also like to search by specific company name, you can do that as well. Sorry, I'm in contacts. If you go to my companies, and then search by company name. You can see companies, click on the company, and then you can learn more about jobs at this company or contacts. So that is Career Shift. It's a good resource for you to use because, like I said, it, it's a web crawler and it does a lot of the work for you. Let's take a look at another resource that we pay for on your behalf. You come back to the Career Center's webpage and then the resources page. I'm going to go to Going Global. You do need to log in with your Clemson username and password. Oops. And then click on click here to log in. This is a wonderful resource if you're looking at applying to jobs internationally or even looking to relocate to another city within the United States. Oops. So 
Excuse me, this doesn't normally happen. There we go. Now we're in. You can see that it says Clemson University Michelin Career Center at the top, which means you know that you're in the premium content area. So back to what I was saying, if you're looking to relocate within the United States or relocate internationally, this is an excellent resource for you to use because it does provide country guides and city guides that outline job resources, um, resume and cover letter advice specific to that country, um, different cultural advice, financial considerations, um, and other information. So you can see we're looking at Australia. You can also search for jobs and internships by going to either tab um, and entering keywords and locations. You'll see there are close to 2,000 results from that search. So you may need to narrow it down. Internship search works exactly the same. And I didn't show you the city guides. Um, they have U.S. city guides. And they work the same way as the country guides as well. So for our international students, the H-1B database provides a listing of U.S. companies that have applied for H-1B visas in the past. Um, this can help you target your search to specific companies that have historically been willing um, to provide sponsorship. So you can type in a key term or a job title. Pick the years that you want to search and if you want to look for a specific area. So the results display the job title, um, company names, locations, salaries, and the year that they applied um, for the visa. Uh, this is a really great resource to get salary ranges for position types by location. So you can see senior software engineers um, in Texas. Apparently it didn't like my CA abbreviation for California. Um, make 85000 versus in Cary, North Carolina, they make 80000 So you definitely want to pay attention to the location because that can influence the wage results. If you click on a company's name, you'll get a full history of their application um, status. And if you want to learn more about how to use Going Global, because I know this was a very quick overview, you can click on the training and go to the students or alumni section. And they're generally about an hour long. They usually have a couple each month. Right now they've got one more in February and one in March. Um, this is updated all the time. You can come in here and take a look for a training that will fit your schedule. The last resource I wanna show you is specifically for internships. So if you go to the internship program section of our website, and then off-campus internship program, and then student resources. There are going to be many resources here for finding information about internships, but let's look specifically at the online internship books link. You're going to want to enter this username and password on the next page. So this service states that it's for undergraduate students, but several of the opportunities also recruit graduate students, so it's still a good resource for you to use. If you have an interest in an internship, let's say in the media world, um, go ahead and click on the media internship book. The organizations um, and internships are then by state. So if you're interested in going to California, click on the opportunity and then it'll give you a summary of who they're looking for, uh, what types of experiences are offered, what majors they prefer, prefer uh, payment amount when they usually offer them, and then contact information as well.
So this is the online internship books on our internship programs webpage. So let's go back to the presentation and move on to other search methods. This time networking. So earlier I said that 80% of jobs are not posted online. The way to find those positions is through networking. So I'm sure you've heard the phrase, it's who you know, not what you know. Using your network can reduce the time to find a job from six to nine months down to four to six months, so it is worth your time. Make a list of all of your personal con uh, connections. You can use the tracking method that we discussed at the beginning of the presentation to record the details of your network. You know, how do you know them? When was the last time you connected with them? What are they doing now? It's important to stay in contact with your network and not just reach out when you need them for a job. Only calling when you need them to do something for you is the easiest way to make someone feel used and they're not going to want to help you. So reach out and update them on what's going on with you and ask about any new developments with them. You might just learn of a new opportunity that way. You can also create personal connections or learn more about a current connection that you have through what's called informational interviewing and I'm going to talk about that in more detail here in a couple minutes. Other networking methods include attending career fairs, um, employer events on campus, professional conferences, and on-campus events. You know, if employers are taking the time to come to campus, then please attend their sessions and, and learn more about their company. You never know where that connection might lead. So for example, you might be an HR graduate student and you see that an engineering firm is coming to campus. Your initial thought might be that it isn't worth your time to attend the session, thinking that it's just going to be for engineers. But remember, every company has an HR department, and you might miss out on a great opportunity or contact at that organization because you didn't think it was for you. If you attend professional conferences, um, this allows you to expand your network geographically with colleagues within your industry. You know, during a conversation over breakfast, you might just learn of an opportunity that is perfect for you. And then try to connect with alumni. You can use either the Alumni Finder tool in LinkedIn to search for Clemson alumni in your field, or contact a Clemson club, which are alumni organizations located across the United States. When you're a student, it's really easy to reach out to alumni and ask her advice. Uh, many alumni want to give back, and participating in an informational interview with a student is an easy way for them to do that. So sometimes students are hesitant to go to networking events or career fairs because they do not know how to approach strangers. Using the 30-second elevator pitch is an excellent way to introduce yourself and start up a conversation. If you know a little bit about the company or the person already, you can end your pitch with a question for them or by stating how you can be an asset to their company. So let's listen to this video. How to perfect the elevator pitch. If you happen to run into your ideal employer or business partner in an elevator, or anywhere else for that matter, you'll have about 30 seconds or less to wow them. Here's how to do it. You will need skills or ideas, a list of descriptive phrases, a description of your qualifications, and practice. Optional, a mirror. Step 1. Brainstorm a list of phrases that describe you, and cross off any cliches or catchphrases. Keep only the most unique and honest statements. Step 2. Craft a description of qualifications that you can share in 30 seconds or less. Write the pitch like you speak. This will make it easier to deliver and make it sound more authentic. Step 3. Practice your pitch on friends and family. Ask for feedback and adjust your pitch. It will become natural by doing it over and over. Use a mirror to pitch yourself. If you can't look yourself in the eye, how can you engage someone else? Step 4. Make your pitch about the needs of your listener. Talk about the problems facing their industry that you are uniquely positioned to solve. Step 5. Describe your value in solving these problems. Step six, allow room for dialogue. Most people don't like to be talked at, so be conversational and show an interest in them. Step seven, ask for something, a business card, a phone call, or permission to send your resume. The point of your pitch is to break the ice and generate interest, but you need to ask for the next step. Did you know, as of 2009, the Taipei Financial Center in Taiwan featured the world's fastest elevator, running at a top speed of 39 miles per hour. Now, 
you need to try it at home. Write out a script and practice in front of a mirror until you're comfortable talking with yourself. You really do need to practice it time and time again so that it sounds conversational. So I've mentioned the term informational interviewing a few times during the presentation. Let's talk about what it is and what it isn't. It is an authentic way to build a network because you're getting to know the person and not just collecting a business card. It's a chance to learn more about their current position, um, their career path into that position, as well as seek industry information and advice on getting into that industry. You are not asking for a job or even interviewing for a job. This is an information gathering activity. And at the end of each interview, politely thank them for their time and ask if they could connect you with one or two people in the field that you can talk to just like you did with them. That will help grow your network. And you can start out by conducting informational interviews with people that you know, like your faculty or your mentors, and then branch out into meeting um, alumni or new professionals in your field. And remember, you need to keep in touch with your networking list. So let's uh, listen to this video here to learn a little bit more. An informational interview is a conversation with someone who has information about a career that you are interested in. It's not an actual job interview. It's just an opportunity to connect with a professional in a field that interests you. Um, so an informational interview has a twofold purpose. First of all, it helps you figure out if it's something that you want to do. So if you want to be a research at, researcher at Procter & Gamble, then you just need to find somebody who works at Procter & Gamble and ask them, you know, can I spend 20 minutes on the phone with you and talk to you about your career path? What classes did you take as a student? How did you get involved uh, in research? What opportunities did you take advantage of? What would you recommend that I do so that someday I can become a researcher like you? And the second purpose is that it helps you connect to somebody at a company that you want to work at. Because once somebody spends time with you, they become invested in you and in your success and they want to help you. And being a student is like the golden ticket. And you have the gift of curiosity and they have the gift of expertise. So you can just reach out to someone and say, you know what, I'm doing research for a class or I'm writing a paper or I'm just personally interested in how you got to be where you are today. And most people are very flattered that you're taking an interest in the thing that they spend most of their time doing. Okay, so if you need more resources on informational interviewing, um, you can check out our website. If I go back a couple slides, we do have a handout on informational interviewing out here on our resources page. Go to handouts. So if you're already in the job search um, process and you're not seeing a lot of success, success then it's time to reflect um, on your actions. Review your application materials. Are you tailoring your resume and cover letter to each position? If not, you need to do so. And you can watch our resume and cover letter workshop to learn more on how to tailor those documents. How are your interview skills? Are your communication skills helping you or hurting you? Is your tone friendly or is it demanding? Are you telling your story in relation to that job? Schedule a mock interview with our office or utilize the virtual mock interview in Clemson Job Link to practice. And review the positions that you've applied to. Are you overqualified or underqualified for the positions? Do you need to learn a new skill to be competitive for that type of position? And if you haven't connected with your network, reach out to them with an update on what you're doing now and what you're looking for in a position. And someone may be able to connect with you, um, connect you to an opportunity. And then conduct some more informational interviewing. If you haven't done one in a while, it might be time to do another. And if you've only been looking online, you definitely need to use that multifaceted approach and get out and connect with your network or get out into career fairs or events um, and meet some additional people. So when was the last time you listened to your own voicemail? 
If it's been a while, call yourself and see how it sounds. If it is not professional, please record a new greeting. You know, I've talked a lot about mock interviews today. Please utilize this resource. Um, recruiters tell us all the time that they can see a difference between students who have practiced and those that have not. And then consistent and timely follow-up after interviews is important. You know, a thank you note or an email within 24 to 48 hours after an interview is appropriate. And if you know that they're going to be interviewing for another couple weeks, a follow-up interview, you know, maybe, or excuse me, a follow-up email two weeks later reiterating your interest in the position is also appropriate. Just do not become a nuisance or annoying um, by contacting too frequently. And then if you accept a position, go back to your tracking document and withdraw your application from all active positions. You know, it avoids an awkward conversation with a recruiter calls to invite you to an interview and you have to tell them that you've already accepted a position. Removing your application within the system or a quick email um, thanking them for their time and consideration is all you need to do. Recruiters tend to remember people who take this extra step. I know this has been a lot of information. If you'd like to learn more, here are a few links to career spot videos about job searching and networking. And these are located on the resources page. Check them out if you have time. And if you're ready to put this knowledge to use, you can check out our career fairs and other events. The fall career fair is generally held in September. The spring career fair is generally held in late January or early February. And we do offer some industry-specific career fairs as well. And check out our events page for exact dates and more information about our upcoming events and services. On this slide, you see our full offering of services and available programs. Um, like I said, these are available to you as a graduate student. And if you need more help, you can find us on the third floor of Hendricks Student Center on the main campus. Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4.30, or online at Clemson, or excuse me, at career.clemson.edu, or social media at Clemson CCPD. You can give us a call at 864-656-6000, or our appointment line at 864-656-0440. During the fall and spring semesters, we offer drop-ins Monday through Friday from 1.30 to 4 p.m., um, see our website for summer hours. These are for quick questions and last 10 to 15 minutes. And they're great opportunities uh, to briefly talk to a career counselor about one topic of interest. And during the fall and spring semesters, we offer appointments Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to noon and 1.30 to 4. See our website for summer hours. These are great when you need to talk to a career counselor about multiple topics or would like to spend more time discussing a topic. You must call ahead for an appointment, and they last 30 or 60 minutes, depending on the topic. For example, mock interviews last 60 minutes. Thank you for viewing our workshop. If you have questions, please do not hesitate to call us at 864-656-6000 or come in for drop-ins or an appointment.